What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is Dragon Blitz, and this is going to be a commentary of my 200.6% speedrun world record in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This speedrun, particularly, uh, the main goal of it is that we are collecting all of the map in the game, the maximum percentage of map that you can collect uh, without using any out-of-bounds glitches is 200.6 percentage. The way that we confirm that we get all of the map tile is that we are going to receive an achievement once we collect the very last map tile uh, when we enter the Shaft boss fight. This is being played on the Xbox 360 version of the game, so that achievement will pop up on screen once we complete that goal. And then we will finish the run on defeating Dracula. Uh, this run does not use any out of bounds glitches, so we aren't getting any glitched map tiles, but I am still allowing glitches uh, in order to maneuver through the castle faster. The first glitch we're going to see coming up here is the death skip. The goal of Death Skip is to obviously skip the cutscene with Death, the Grim Reaper, who takes away your gear uh, at the start of the game. Also, this speedrun was performed live on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash dragonblitz. I would love to see you in the live chat one of these days, so make sure to click the follow button. Also, if you're watching this and you enjoy Castlevania or speedrunning, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. Thank you so much. Here we are setting up the death skip right now. I am damage boosting off that warg to get him to bark faster at me. And then I set up the skip by going into a specific position. Use the neutron bomb while walking. Um, that gives me a level up while trying to scroll the screen. I backdash out of that. That activates the glitch known as a reverse shift line, which essentially skips the screen where death normally is. And then he never talks to me and never takes away my gear. I'm gonna re-equip the Alucard sword right here. And this is gonna be the first part where you see me collecting map. Uh, that is that save room right there. Normally in any other speedrun, you wouldn't go out of your way to uh, collect that map tile, but the goal is to collect every single map tile in the game. So uh, one of the main ways that this route diverges from normal speedruns is that I'm gonna be taking time during this beginning section of the game to collect map tiles, specifically because um, you might think it'd be faster to collect these map tiles later when you have faster movement options, but actually the beginning part of the game you are uh, stuck in a particular cycle, an in-game time cycle, uh, known as the Clock Rush. So what happens in this game is there is the statue that uh, blocks the path towards Alrox's quarters that opens every other minute. So the earliest possible cycle that you can get there uh, that's performable by humans is an eight-minute cycle. This is known as the eight-minute Clock Rush. So because I would have to lose time waiting for that statue to move anyways, it's more efficient to use that time to collect extra map tiles. Like I opened two secrets up in the prior room and I'm doing this box puzzle now. Uh, even though my movement isn't as fast as it would be later in the run, it just becomes more efficient to collect these map tiles now as opposed to trying to collect them later. Here I'm particularly avoiding killing those Axe Knights because at this point, any enemy that I kill from here on out will give me a level up. Um, at this point, which is another reason why I don't kill that Spittlebone, because in general, you want to stack the amount of level ups you get on bosses since they give so much experience. And every single level up animation um, is condensed down into one. So here I'm probably leveling up like two or three times by killing both Saga and Gaibon on, uh, at the same time, but I only get one level up animation. So that just saves time waiting for those level up animations to play out. Um, but yeah, the rest of the uh, beginning part of the run is pretty similar to how other speedruns behave. Uh, we are quite overpowered because of our Alucard sword that we kept through using the uh, death skip. Uh, here we uh, try and just optimize our movement by collecting map tiles just barely. Um, I've done a lot of practice and testing to see pretty much exactly where the bounds for some of these map tiles will activate. Um, for example, just doing a short hop right there will uh, give me the map tile that is on the top right part of that square room. And um, this is probably the most difficult and like unforgiving speedrun category of this game that I've ever played. Um, you could lose a lot of time by trying to double check uh, every single map tile uh, right after collecting it by opening the map and looking at it to see if you've actually collected it or not. Um, but I've spent a lot of time practicing, trying to know exactly when and where you have to stand in order to collect certain map tiles to uh, save time so I don't have to open the map over and over and over again to double check. 
Um, but it it's quite unforgiving because the the error uh, the window of error for some of these map tiles is incredibly thin. Um, I will be opening the map probably a handful of times to double check to see if I got map tiles because some of the map tiles are just very unpredictable whether or not you've actually gotten it. And one of the only ways to really be 100% certain is to just check the map yourself, which is a time loss, but it's kind of necessary in a run like this. I'll go over some of the more difficult map tiles uh, as they come up and explain why they are so difficult. Um, from my understanding, the way that the game categorizes whether or not you've collected map isn't based off of Alucard's position, but it's based off of the camera's position, um, which is its own separate thing. But in general, most of the time it relates to where Alucard is standing. Um, I could be wrong on that. I'm not an expert as far as uh, map collection goes. Most of these strategies are ones that I've developed my own just from trial and error and um, just having played the game for many, many years and kind of having a pretty decent understanding of the game's mechanics and how they work. But yeah, from here on out, uh, there's no more extra map collection that isn't uh, just a part of normal movement during the early part of the game. The early part of the game, the main goal is to obviously collect map as, as we go, but also I'm trying to collect the Soul of Wolf. It is the first relic that will give us access to extra movement options. Um, the uh, wolf itself, the transformation, lets you uh, dive kick out of it. This is an unintended mechanic, uh, but uh, or an, an unintended consequences of an intended mechanic, which is every time you transform into any transformation, whether it be the wolf, the mist, or the bat, once you untransform, Alucard has access to a dive kick. Uh, normally, uh, most people only realize that you have access to a dive kick once you. Um, acquire the double jump relic, the leapstone. But for whatever reason, they programmed you to be able to dive kick out of these transformations. So we're gonna be using that in a way that uh, allows us to gain some extra height because you can dive kick off of enemies this way and you could also dive kick off of candles. So we're gonna be dive kicking off of a candle to gain some extra height and then enter the uh, Aurox's quarters. But first we're gonna be doing a uh, wolf jump here. If you are running up a slope and then jump with some momentum on that slope, uh, while in the wolf transformation, it gives you a lot of extra height um, that's used to collect that garnet uh, early. And garnets are really useful because they sell for 5,000 gold. Um, and we're going to be using it in a glitch later on to sell a bunch of garnets um, in order to buy really overpowered gear uh, once we get to the shop. Um, another nice thing about the wolf is that it gives you access to wolf movement, and the wolf running on the ground is nearly as fast as Alucard doing the shield dash, which is the form of movement you see me doing there a lot where I'm sliding across the ground. But the wolf is better in the air because you don't slow down in the air while in the wolf transformation. Uh, there I took damage on accident. It's actually faster to retransform into wolf at that point um, because the wolf movement is faster than Alucard, even though the uh, transformation is so slow. Yeah, doing some precise wolf jumps to avoid these enemies because uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be untransforming mid-air by doing a high jump with the wolf, dive kicking off of this candle, and then we're going to jump up into the Aurox's quarters. Um, we were at like 8 minutes and it looked like 18 seconds uh, once we entered that room. So uh, as long as we didn't spend more than 18 seconds exploring and grabbing extra map tiles, we actually saved time as opposed to waiting to get those map tiles after the clock um uh, uh, clock rush itself. Going into the Coliseum, the reason we are here is because there is another transformation relic in here that is the form of mist, and that will give us access to the final transformation um, relic, which is the form of bat, soul of bat. Here I'm doing an AI manipulation by jumping and slashing. This causes the uh, blade masters to slide under me, and then walking forward causes them to jump over me. Uh, basically just optimizing the amount of time I'm able to shield dash into the uh, it, throughout the Coliseum. Here, uh, the AI for the Minotaur and Werewolf fight doesn't start until uh, they recognize that the cutscene, uh, or it's on a timer waiting for the cutscene to end, if I understand correctly, um, where Richter comes in and basically taunts Alucard. But because we were playing on a uh, new file after having cleared the game, uh, we're able to skip cutscenes, so they're waiting for the cutscene to end, but uh, the cutscene, um, it, it's, it's like a, a timer thing. Long story short, they stand still, we slash them a bunch, and they die before they're able to fight us. We grab the Form of Mist, and then here I'm doing a Soul Steel spell to clear the first part of the room. 
to get these enemies out of the way, I'm gonna damage boost off of a gunshot from one of the skeleton gunmen to grab the shield rod. The shield rod is incredibly powerful. It's probably one of the most important items in all of Symphony of the Night speedrunning, depending on the category that you are playing. Um, it uh, combines with whatever shield you are using to give you like a special spell. And the Alucard shield itself is the strongest shield in combination with the shield rod. Here we're gonna be using that dive kick mechanic again. Uh, we're able to dive kick again after untransforming. Uh, and we dive kick off of that book to get extra height to get to the fairy card. This is the first relic we're gonna um, be seeing that uh, is a familiar. The familiars in this game are pretty much useless as far as like combat goes uh, and their utility as like actual familiars isn't that useful. But this familiar is useful because it will activate a glitch for us here at the shop. The fairy's dialogue um, interacting with the beginning of the shopkeeper's cutscene causes a glitch uh, known as the shop glitch. So what happens here is that I am able to open the menu to equip the garnet as a equipped uh, accessory and then sell it as I'm equipping it. Um, so the game is trying to take one away from your inventory by selling it. Um, but you've already taken one away by equipping it. Therefore, it underflows the value of garnets you have from zero to negative one. Um, this game doesn't allow for negative numbers uh, for equipment. It'll underflow all the way to 255, and then you could sell as much as you need to buy very uh, overpowered gear. The really important gear that we end up getting from this is the um, duplicator. This gives you infinite usage of any single use items, so potions, throwable items, stuff like that. Um, I also activated the shield rod spell, so now anytime the shield touches an enemy, it activates the damage aspect of the uh, spell, and it also gives Alucard a decent amount of invincibility. You'll see him like flashing white. So you're invincible for like two seconds after touching literally anything with the shield, so it's really, really powerful. And it does 255 damage uh, as its base damage, which is really, really high. Here we're gonna be collecting the Soul of Wolf, and we're gonna be doing one of our first uh, floor clips of the run. Uh, floor clips, this won't actually put me out of bounds. Um, I don't get any extra out of bounds map tiles for doing this, but it's very convenient because it allows me to skip uh, into the bottom area here and collect these map tiles that are at the bottom of the library without forcing me to backtrack. Here I do need to refill my MP, which is why I untransform, because you can only use mana prisms while in Alucard form. And we escape the library faster that way and collect some map along the way, which is really, really nice. Um, the main purpose of the start of the run, these first like 12 minutes or so, is all about getting the bat relic because it has access to the spell known as Wing Smashing. Uh, the Wing Smash input is uh, kind of a difficult input. It is a uh, input where you hold the jump button, press up, and then do a three quarter circle from up to back to down to forward and then release the jump button. It's eight inputs in total and you have to do all of them. Um, in order to get the Wing Smash to come out, you can't miss any of those inputs or skip any of those inputs. And then you can continue the Wing Smash chain by doing the input again within 63 frames of doing the first input. Here I am doing uh, a lot of Wing Smashing in this big outdoor section. I'm checking my map to make sure to see which tiles I've collected. The goal here is to kind of sweep from left to right to left to right over and over again in uh, bat form to collect the, wing, uh, the map tiles in this large open room. Once we gain access to other movement options, I'm going to be using those different movement options to collect map tiles even faster than this. Um, it all depends on the shape and size of the room will determine what kind of movement we do through here. There, I just have to drop down to collect uh, the map tile in between here. I double check to make sure that I got it. There is a secret uh, switch. Uh, that you have to press here. Uh, each of these cogs, you press a certain number of times by hitting them. Uh, I just have the number memorized, and there's also a distinct uh, clicky noise that you'll hear um, once you've done the right number of attacks to it, and it'll open up a secret door. There's no real way to skip into this area uh, and skip the slow um, like puzzle aspect here, and that opens that door right there. Just to get the map tile, we go in and out real quick, and then we fly up to the top of the room. We're gonna be doing uh, some more movement through this breakable wall over here. I'm gonna wing smash into it to try breaking it a little bit. And then the Alucard shield is gonna break open the wall the rest of the way. Yeah, a lot of the movement I do is to guarantee that I'm collecting map tiles like I said before. Um, right here, I'm really low on MP, so I have to untransform and then re-apply uh, 
the mana prism. Every time I use a mana prism, it'll get me all the way back to full MP. But the downside is I do have to uh, untransform and not be in the bat form in order to use a mana prism. So essentially the movement all comes down to uh, trying to push my mana as much as I can. Because every time I use a wing smash, it costs eight MP. So I'm wing smashing everywhere uh, to go fast, but I'm losing MP while doing so. And then I need to untransform at some point to use a mana prism to refill my MP so I can start wing smashing again. So it's like a big uh, resource management uh, thing where I'm resource uh, managing the resource that is my MP. And then I'm also inputting the wing smash input over and over again. The other aspect to the speed run that uh, is quite difficult is that the wing smash itself can be angled after performing the wing smash. So you could do upward wing smashes, downward wing smashes. Um, right here, I'm doing uh, big upward wing smashes to collect a lot of map tiles um, efficiently. Here, I'm using the stopwatch so that way these uh, flea riders don't get in my way. This is another uh, pretty fast way to collect map tiles in larger rooms is you wing smash upwards and then dive kick down to collect a uh, map underneath. Here, I'm doing a specific movement that I think ended up not working if I remember correctly. I double check my map here. Oh, I'm thinking of a different run. My bad. No, I must have got it then. That map tile is kind of precise. Um, I've, I've lost many runs to um, wing smashing and then canceling the wing smash, and it just doesn't take me far enough to the left to collect a specific map tile that I'm looking for. But yeah, this uh, speedrun is very difficult, like I said, because it's just all movement, and it's all movement with the goal of collecting map tiles. So the end points of all of the uh, movement that we do here is a little arbitrary. Like there, I have to jump up into those uh, the top of those bell towers to make sure that I collect the right uh, map tiles. Yeah, this, this run, I would say the early game uh, is quite lacking as far as like perfect execution. Uh, the execution in the early game is a little weak. Um, but I pick it up, especially uh, in the later aspects of this run. I get a lot uh, cleaner with my movement. Uh, you're going to see some front slides here. This is a movement option where you can dive kick. Now that I have the leap stone, uh, I can just dive kick uh, diagonally whenever I want by double jumping. And if you dive kick into the ground, and by the time that you hit the ground, you aren't pressing any forward directions or any directions at all. Uh, you just have a full neutral input. Uh, you'll slide across the ground with the same... Uh, speed is the dive kick which is a little bit faster than back dashing which is really cool here i'm using the mana prisms invincibility because every time you use a potion in this game uh you get a little bit of in invincibility i'm getting that invincibility so that way i don't have to worry about collecting the spike breaker armor in order to get into that room over there to uh, get the map tile specifically. The silver ring itself, uh, which is normally used to get to the Holy Glasses area, isn't necessary in this run. Um, you don't need the silver ring in order to get Holy Glasses. Um, we're gonna be using a glitch later to get the Holy Glasses um, early, but it's just nice to um, be able to get in there early uh, and get all the map tiles. There I'm collect. I'm double checking to make sure I got all the map in uh, the chapel there for this section. Here I'm going to be using the shield rod spell again. The screen is going to flash a little bit if you're sensitive to that. I'm sorry. And it's done. And there we go. So that uh, skips that statue or that um, like, yeah, statue that's blocking the path to get into all Ox's quarters from the chapel. Um, that's just a chapel specific glitch. You don't really get a chance to do stuff like that uh, anywhere else, really. Um, it's just very convenient because it allows us to get into this side of Arox's quarters. Otherwise, we'd have to go the long way around, which is very slow. Here, this is probably one of the worst rooms as far as like collecting map tiles goes. So here I'm doing the, uh, I'm trying to use the tops of the houses as my visual cue, where if I fly slightly above the roofs of these houses, um, it should give me the map tiles. There, it didn't give me the map tile because uh, this game sucks. <laughs> but I double checked because this is a very troublesome area when it comes to map completion. It would be slightly easier to collect that map tile if I had access to the gravity boots because then I could double jump uh, dive kick and then gravity jump out of the dive kick, um, which is a strat that we will be using later in the run. It's just unfortunate that we don't really have time to get the gravity boots before this section. Um, it is a decent amount of time loss to go out of my way to get the gravity boots because they are in the kind of in the center of the castle. There's no quick way to get there uh, while not like kind of wasting time. So the it just ends up being faster to wait to get gravity boots, which is unfortunate because um, gravity boots do enhance your movement a decent amount. Um, but it is a big time loss to go out of my way to get them.
Um, another aspect of this run that I did not mention, uh, it's not important, but essentially I am uh, doing extra uh, collectibles in this run that I don't need to technically for the definition of this run. I collect every single relic in the game and I beat every single boss in the game as well. That isn't necessary in order to um, finish a run or have this run in um, the leaderboards for the 200.6% leaderboards. Uh, it's just something that I added as an additional challenge to myself, um, specifically because there was a 200.6% uh, speed run that was not legitimate, that I personally thought had a terrible route. Um, they used save states and macros to uh, have inhuman amounts of like, uh, perfection in their execution, but the actual route that they chose to do was quite poor. And as kind of a flex, I decided I would reroute the entire 200.6% speed run, um, specifically to not only uh, beat that run that was cheated, uh, which I, I have done with this run. This run is about 10 sec or 10 minutes faster than that cheated run, which is no longer uh, available to watch. They've taken that run down off of YouTube. Um, not only does it uh, do it 10 minutes faster than they were able to, but it also uh, collects every single relic and beats every single boss, which that run um, that was cheated skipped some bosses and skipped a lot of the relics. Uh, from here on out, though, once I do new runs of this category, if I uh, do decide to try and optimize this run, I think I'll just do the bare minimum, uh, collect just the map tiles and not worry about fighting every single boss, as well as not... Um, uh, collecting every single relic. For example, one of the biggest time saves from skipping a boss would be the Succubus boss fight. Um, the Succubus boss fight, you don't need to do to collect all the map at all. And you don't need the uh, gold ring from Succubus in order to collect all the map either. Uh, this section actually went incredibly well. The Coliseum is probably one of the harder places to wing smash through. Um, that is the only bonk I think I had. Uh, bonking happens when you wing smash directly into a wall. It forces you to untransform and it's very, very slow. It makes a loud bonking noise, which is why we call it a bonk. Um, but yeah, uh, it's very, very tight wing smashing um, there. You want to wing smash very, very straight. And because the inputs for wing smashing uh, are almost an entire full circle, um, you're going to be pressing up for uh, a little while. You're going to be pressing down for a little while. So you want your up and your down presses to um, basically even out. This is one of the cooler uh, movement strats that I came up with. Uh, we're using a back dash to cancel into the bat transformation, and that keeps your horizontal momentum from the back dash. This is known as a bat dash. I know, very clever naming convention. And I'm aiming to get into the corner of each one of these little steps because that is exactly where the map tiles are. I think I pull up the map quickly here before leaving. I should, unless I'm confident that I got all the map tiles. I am quite confident I got all those map tiles. Nice. Dang, I'm gaming right now. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the stairs themselves have a very weird uh, way that the map is shaped. I mean, you can look up a um, picture of the map for this game. It is quite arbitrary, uh, the shape of the map at any given time. Uh, because they were forced to use all squares of all the same um, size when making the map, it uh, means that some of these map locations, like the actual bounds of what is considered collecting the map and what is not, is very, very jank. Um, for the longest time, nobody wanted to speedrun this category, specifically because the way that the map uh, collection works in this game is quite uh, arbitrary. So you'd have to learn how each map tile behaves individually, because there isn't like a universal mechanic for how map tiles behave or how to collect specific map tiles. So for the most part, I've kind of gone out of my way to uh, make strategies to collect map tiles quickly, then memorize those strategies, uh, as well as memorizing backup strategies and all of that other stuff that you need to know to make sure that you are collecting all the map tiles without losing a ton of time. So far, I think I've only had to go back for one map tile uh, in this uh, speedrun, which was in the beginning of All Rocks' quarter, because the strat that I went for, just uh, I did it improperly. But other than that, uh, the movement has been quite good. Uh, still a couple bonks here or there. Like I said, this is a very long category. It's difficult to have absolutely perfect movement throughout. But as long as I'm not wasting time on the actual map collection part by um, uh, having to backtrack to collect map that I missed, then for the most part, this is uh, close to optimal here. 
Another place that uh, skipping a relic would save a lot of time is this relic right here. I go out of my way for the spirit orb by flying all the way up. Even though I don't need to, I can collect the map without collecting the orb itself. And it would save, like, I don't know, like five seconds. Spirit Orb is nice to have because you get to see how much damage you're doing. So uh, from our Spectre's point of view, you guys will now understand why the Alucard Shield is so incredibly powerful. Because once I use it on uh, this next boss coming up, you will see uh, just the sheer amount of damage. This is another important aspect of the run is I cannot lose the stopwatch um, that I have right now as my sub weapon. Um, there is a random chance that the Axe Knights in this game could drop a sub weapon, the Axe sub weapon specifically, as I kill them by flying into them with a wing smash. Um, and that would lose me a lot of time if I miss out on um, the uh, having the stopwatch sub weapon, specifically because that room that I opened up, you need the clock, the sub weapon for, and um, you need it for the first castle and the second castle. So I can't lose the stopwatch. Here I'm going for a setup to set up my position to make sure that when I dive or jump into the stairs here as the wolf, uh, it clips me into the floor, similar to what we did in the library. Uh, these floor clips are very precise. They're uh, close to frame perfect on both the jump and the untransform. It's one of the reasons why I pull up the map. It's not to check my map, it's actually to buffer the inputs uh, to make sure I'm using the right inputs. But that floor clip gives me access to this area of the map, which is where the holy glasses are. Normally you need the silver ring and the gold ring to get down here, um, but I'm able to get here early and get a lot of the extra map taken care of. Here I'm going into my menu to equip a library card because we are actually going to be using the library card a couple of times to teleport from some section of the map that we don't need to be in to uh, the library and clean up some more uh, map completion that we need to do. For example, we didn't finish collecting everything in the library before. And we're going to be doing that right now. So we kind of beelined it straight to getting the bat relic um, as fast as possible. And there's still a few rooms that we need to take care of. Uh, specifically the upper part of this section. I have to collect the map over here. And then there is a secret room behind this bookcase. If you walk or backdash into the bookcase, it pushes it over. Um, and we do that real quick just to grab the room. Another uh, important movement option you might see me going for is I'm going into a dive kick and then transforming into the bat. Basically, anything that has you um, uh, have any form of horizontal momentum, and if you transform into the bat, it maintains that horizontal momentum. And since dive kicks have, I believe, the fastest horizontal momentum at startup out of any uh, movement option in the game outside of wing smashing, um, the fastest way to start uh, transforming into the bat is going to be to dive kick and then transform into the bat. So you're moving quickly across the screen while transforming. It makes it more efficient. So the time spent transforming is also time spent moving. But yeah, we cleaned up pretty much the entirety of the library there because um, there was a few map tiles that we missed. And now we are going to warp back to the castle entrance. Um, because there is more stuff at the castle entrance that we need to clean up as well. The only downside to the route that I have chosen is that it does require you to use the teleporter multiple times because the teleporter works on a cycle, um, which is counterclockwise around the map from each teleporter to each teleporter. Um, and since I need to collect those teleporter rooms in order to collect all the map tiles, um, it just forces me to have to do extra teleport animations because you can't choose where to teleport. There isn't like a menu to choose. You just have to keep teleporting until you uh, hit the right spot. Here, I'm transforming into the wolf in the middle of the cave. Uh, this opens up this secret here, which I have zero clue how anyone's supposed to figure that out uh, without some sort of guide. Um, but that has access to the jewel sword. But yeah, it's just more secret map tiles that you need uh, in order to get every single map tile in the game. This area is pretty tough to move through. It's a lot of tight uh, corridors. Another thing to uh, note about the movement in this game, um, the wing smash is sensitive to slopes. So if I wing smash and I touch a slope, the momentum of that slope is imparted onto the bat and onto that wing smash's angle. You can use that to your advantage. Like right here, I'm gonna be wing smashing against these stairs to get a very high vertical wing smash because I'm imparting the uh, the, the slope of the stairs into the vertical uh, momentum of the bat. Here I'm double checking my map to make sure that all of that movement I just did uh, worked out in my favor. 
Uh, I'm going to be using the newly acquired power of Wolf to move really, really fast as the Wolf. This doubles as a setup because if I bonk against that ledge there, it sets up my positioning such that I'll be able to easily set up uh, another reverse shift line. This is very similar to the glitch that we used to skip the cutscene with death. Um, I just have to align against that wall to make sure I actually make it through. And that skips the switch that locks us out of the caverns. So this gives us access to the caverns earlier than we would uh, be able to otherwise. Uh, the caverns are kind of notorious for some of the glitchiest, jankiest map tiles in the game um, overall. And thankfully the first castle actually has pretty decent um, map tiles. Like they make sense uh, where you need to be to collect those map tiles. In fact, you can even collect these map tiles uh, for the bottom section here without even touching the water, which is really nice. It's the inverted um, section, the inverted uh, cav uh, caverns. Once you enter the second castle, those are the map tiles that you really do need to worry about. Actually, that's not true. This waterfall has terrible uh, map tile uh, collection. Because this room is like one and a half tiles wide but the actual map shows it as two tiles wide. So I'm doing very specific movement all the way into the right side to make sure that I get all the map that I need, like right over there. Um, it's really, really annoying. And I, then I, of course, get stuck in the water. When you're in the water, you can't transform um, into the bat, which sucks. So I'm just kind of forced to go straight down for a little while, and then I have to gravity jump out to change my momentum. We press that switch so that way we can spawn in the Donkey Kong Skeleton or Skeleton Ape. I always call it the Donkey Kong Skeleton. Uh, I accidentally caused him to throw his barrel early, which is uh, unfortunate time loss. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to lure him into the right spot so he can throw the barrel onto the bridge and break it open. There is a glitch you could technically do to skip this part, but it is very, very slow to set up, uh, unfortunately. So we just have to take the time loss uh, with the Skeleton Ape. This is another boss that you could skip if you uh, didn't force yourself to fight all of the bosses. I think it ends up just being faster to fight Cerberus anyways, but um, nonetheless, the other reason we do it is because we set up another reverse shift line, similar to the one that we did uh, just a few moments ago to get into the caverns. I'm going to be using another reverse shift line glitch, setting it up with a heart refresh to pause the screen. Um, and this is going to allow me to skip needing the devil or demon card in order to press the switch and get me access to this secret area. This saves about 10 seconds if done uh, first try. I think I did it a little slow, but I still ended up saving time on it, which is nice. Um, otherwise, you'd have to go down and collect uh, the... The other nice thing is uh, when you're in the wall like that, it pushes you down really, really fast, so it skips a room. But since the room is loaded on the screen, it actually gives you all the map for that room that you're falling through, which is also really nice. But yeah, otherwise, you would have to go all the way down collect the demon card right here, open the menu, equip the demon, and then fly back up, and then have the demon uh, press the switch. Which I think is a total of about 10 seconds or so. So it's a very minimal amount of time save in the long run for a run this long. Um, but it's really, really cool. It's one of my favorite glitches uh, that I kind of like figured out a setup for. Um, again, this route and a lot of the, not glitches for this route, but a lot of the implementation of the glitches uh, for this route are things that I came up with. Again, there wasn't really a lot of people running this category uh, before I did. And if they did, they were running completely different variations of the route. So for the most part, uh, this route is one that I kind of came up with for the most part by myself. The only two players that I know of that have done legitimate 200.6% speedruns um, in the past, for sure, are Satoru, who I believe was the first to do it, and this was a very long time ago. Um, back in, like, the mid-2000s or something like that, maybe, like, 2008. Um, as well as Kei Naka, who did a completely different, like, version of this route uh, that was completely glitchless. But yeah, the two of them were somewhat inspirations for uh, this run. Here, I'm just allowing myself to take a bunch of damage to leave the blind spike room. Because um, I could transform into the bat and then use the echo of bat to see where I'm going. But it actually ends up just being faster to like push myself through the spike room while uh, damage boosting. Because the game uh, programs those uh, spikes to push you out. So that way you don't try and force it with damage boost. But we can take advantage of that to get out of the spike room faster. 
Yet another secret breakable wall. Ooh, barely dodged that discus lord. Let's go. Uh, this room is completely useless. I don't know why it exists. I think there's an item in there in the Saturn version of the game, but as far as the PlayStation and Xbox versions of the game go, that bottom left room here in the catacombs has nothing except for a candle that drops, I believe, $1. So that's cool. Grand Floon, as you can see here, is absolutely melting. 255 damage per hit. Here I'm spending some time to collect the extra map tiles of this room while the boss is being defeated so I don't lose any time. And then once we enter this room, we're pretty much done with the catacombs. We collected all the map we need. So again, we're very far into this part of the castle. We can just library card to teleport out. From here, um, I transform into the wolf because I'm going for a floor clip. I don't believe I get it. No, I was kind of close. Um, that's one of those floor clips that um, are really only possible. I mean really only re uh, realistic for a human to do without map buffering them um, because of the power of wolf. Because you're moving faster with the power of wolf, some of these floor clips become easier. I did miss it uh, and it's not worth going for multiple times. It would just allow me to leave the library, I believe like five or six seconds faster. Here we have uh, the rest of the outer wall that we haven't done yet. It's nice to do this uh, later because uh, the only way to get into this room over here is either by using the form of mist or by using a secret elevator in a breakable wall um, that takes 30 seconds to activate. So it's, yeah, very, very slow to activate it that way. Also, that entire bottom half of the that room, uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you actually explore that room or not. You get the map for the entire rooms uh, without actually exploring it. It's kind of crazy. Again, it's just inconsistent how big a map tile quote unquote is. Um, a nice thing about Power of Wolf here is that the movement is actually the fastest movement speed in the game, but it takes a little while to get to that speed. So unless you're in a room that is quite large, it's actually usually faster to use Wing Smashing um, as opposed to uh, running around as the wolf. Here, using the wolf is nice because it actually follows downward slopes, which the bat has a very hard time following downward slopes, but the bat has a really easy time following upward slopes. Um, so that's another reason that you would use wolf movement as opposed to bat movement um, if you really needed to go fast, but um, if you were to hit a downward slope, it would like cause you to bonk or whatever in the bat form. Whereas the wolf will follow the actual floor, which is nice. Another breakable wall secret there that we go out of our way for. Um, this area, the way I optimized it is I'm specifically trying to optimize falling down as much as I can um, in the more awkward sections because uh, climbing up these zigzag rooms is very slow and cumbersome, whereas falling down them is a little bit easier. You just have to backdash off the ledge and then just let gravity do the work. Um, so this entire left section, we're going to fall down, but then this right section that's right next to it with no obstacles, since we have access to the gravity boots, we're going to gravity jump up this entire section. So in general, when you have sections like this, where you have a clear open, um, area to like gravity jump up them, it's just faster to use the gravity jump, uh, to climb upwards. All of this map here is, um, it's possible to collect it while doing a floor clip, but that floor clip is probably one of the harder floor clips in the entire game. Um, and this is the boss I was referring to earlier that is skippable. There is no extra map associated uh, with this teleport um, into the nightmare zone. So you actually don't even need to fight uh, Succubus at all in order to collect all of the map if you use all the glitches that I've used in this run. But again, like I said, uh, one of the reasons I routed it this way is specifically so I can fight all the bosses and collect all of the relics as a flex, just to show my routing prowess. And uh, I also thought it'd be more fun. But now we are going to escape here. And we are almost done with the first castle. We just have the last bits of the caverns left and the last bit of the castle keep and then we are done with the first castle uh in general it takes about 45 minutes ish uh to complete the first castle and then about an like 35 ish minutes for the second castle because you have all of the movement options off the bat when entering the second castle no pun intended by uh saying off the bat there even though yeah maybe pun intended it's your choice dealer's choice whether puns intended there 
Here we're going to be setting up a, another out of bounds. So I never loaded the door right there. Oh, just kidding. I messed it up in this run. That's crazy. Normally you can uh, deload the door there. Um, but I actually don't know why that didn't work. I must have been too far to the right, maybe. Um, but yeah, it just it saves like five seconds. It allows you to uh, skip out of the Scylla boss fight. I forgot that I didn't get that uh, glitch to happen. Here, uh, this part doesn't really matter because you have to wait for the uh, ferryman to get to the very end of this section anyways. So I'm just going to be backdashing normally here. Uh, I don't need a shield dash to this section. I'm also using mana prisms a lot. Not because I need the mana, but because the invincibility frames uh, of the mana prism stop my health from ticking down while I'm in the water. But I need to collect all the map that's on the bottom of this underwater section anyways. So here, I'm just waiting for uh, the ferryman to come along, collect all of this map on the bottom here, and then I'm gonna collect the top parts of the map by wing smashing out. Here, I'm collecting the holy symbol. You would think that this might be a relic that you could skip. Uh, actually, no, it's important because with access to the holy symbol, you actually have the ability to transform into the wolf, not the bat for whatever reason, but the wolf uh, while underwater. And the wolf has very good underwater movement compared to Alucard uh, in a lot of situations. And we're gonna be using that to collect map tiles very quickly in the second castle. Honestly, I should probably consider rerouting this bottom section here by using wolf movement now that I'm looking at it. But nonetheless, shield dashing is not that much slower. Then we need to get out of the water there. Yeah, the underwater sections are probably the more uh, difficult to route, but yeah. Here, I'm just looking for a very specific spot to stand on, and then that slope right there, we're gonna library card out. Because we have collected all of the map here in the caverns now. We have a second chance to go for that floor clip that I tried earlier. Did not get it yet again. Uh, again, it's like a small amount of time loss. It's not worth going for multiple times. Because it just skips you having to zigzag through the library right there. And now we can move on to the final part of the first castle. Uh, the first castle is pretty difficult overall in a run like this. Um, I would say that the things that went well are just uh, not needing to go back for multiple map tiles. Um, in a run like this, it's very common that uh, you mess up a strategy and then you have to go back to ensure that you collected the map tile you intended to collect. So for the most part, I've just been executing all the strategies I needed to to collect these map tiles. Um, there is room for improvement as far as execution goes, like right there um, was slightly slower than what is intended to be optimal. But again, uh, in a run this long, it is hard to play absolutely perfectly the entire time. Here, I collect those map tiles by just flying up as high and as fast as I can. This is another relic that could be skipped, but again, I collect all the relics mostly for fun. There is a glitch we could be doing uh, here to skip the encounter with Richter. But it actually ends up being more convenient to collect these map tiles the way that they are. Because um, in order to skip Richter, we would have to uh, do some glitchy shenanigans that would take some time. And it ends up just kind of being about the same amount of time as just fighting Richter. Uh, well, not fighting Richter, but uh, breaking Richter free of the shaft door by collecting the Holy Glasses. Since we are guaranteed to collect the Holy Glasses anyways, it just ends up being convenient to just equip them very quickly and then deal with the uh, fight itself. Um, there is a possibility that routing in Richter Skip could end up being faster. Um, but it would be a decent amount more difficult. Uh, you might be asking, well, you finished the first castle, why are you teleporting back? Uh, was that a mistake? No, actually, because you aren't able to collect that map tile at all unless you revisit the first castle. Because once you either do Richter Skip or clear um, the Shaft Orb from controlling Richter, uh, the game puts you in a cutscene where control is taken away from the player and they force you into the second castle, even though there's an extra map tile above that teleporter. And the only way you have access to it is to teleport back. It's uh, very silly. So that's an additional teleport animation uh, that is forced upon the player. 
Here we're just doing more movement. Um, it's quite awkward to get this movement uh, perfect because of the terrain being as awkward as it is since it's, you know, upside down. Um, the place that it becomes most apparent that uh, movement is quite awkward in the upside, upside down version of the castle is right here. I have to go out of my way to collect a map tile right there. And then I'm trying to wing smash just barely above that uh, part that I just bonked on, that pillar. And I'm pretty sure I still missed map tiles anyways. I'm probably gonna check my map right here. Yep, I missed one square. Um, so it ends up slowing down the entirety of this strat. But you get to see what it looks like to dive kick and then gravity jump over and over again. Um, this is a pretty efficient way to cover uh, map squares. That was that map square that I was missing there. Uh, it's very efficient to cover map squares in large rooms. So you're gonna see me do that a couple of places in the second castle since I have access to the gravity boots. But it's a room by room basis whether or not it ends up being optimal. But yeah, there is the inverted keep. Another very difficult section down. Oh, here I'm almost forgetting that I need to equip the shield rod and reapply the shield rod spell to the Alucard shield. That is another downside to um, doing not doing Richter skip is that the cutscene of the castle uh, flipping unapplies the Alucard shield spell and you have to reapply it after going into the second castle. If you were to skip Richter um, there, you don't have to worry about that. But the issue is, is that the Al Alucard shield would eventually run out anyways. Um, the Alucard shield is on a timer. Every time you hold out the shield, um, you're losing time uh, from being able to use the shield spell. So the shield spell could just run out on its own anyways. So you need to reapply the shield spell at some point anyway, so it's not really time loss for doing it. It's just something that needs to happen no matter what. I just happen to forget that that's the exact spot that you need to do it. There is a decent amount that you need to remember. Uh, every single movement option, every single map tile and how it behaves, where you need to stand for specific map tiles. So forgetting something like that is a little silly, but it makes sense considering the sheer amount of uh, information you need to remember for a run that is this complex and this long. There, I was double checking the map because the those map tiles are a little finicky. They're not super glitchy or anything like that, but they're a little finicky. Here, this is uh, considered the worst room in the game, in my opinion. Uh, you just have these cloaked knights and Medusa heads flying around everywhere. So it's actually really nice to use the stopwatch to stop them in their place. And then I use soul steals to click the um, gear over there. It needs to be hit eight times. Each soul steal hits it three times, so two soul steals. And then I fly into it and then use the shield to do eight total uh, hits to that cog it's a pretty interesting strat there that one needs three and then this bottom one needs 14 so this takes a while one of the nice things about the shield rod making you invincible as well is that i don't have to worry about these stupid enemies flying into me or trying to attack me because i'm holding out the shield and it gives me a full second or so of invincibility every time i pull out the shield so i could be basically fully invincible while i do this Another sad part about this run is I believe, let's see if I actually get this trick. This is like an out of bounds that is like pseudo random. There we go. Um, it gives me extra map tiles if I do it. Uh, I don't know exactly why that works. Uh, something to do with the way that that room is actually misaligned. Um, so that's what causes you to wing smash into uh, from one room into another and have uh, the, the bat actually just bonk. It's uh, very strange, but one of the um, consequences is that if you wing smash after bonking in a specific way, you have a chance to just like fly through a wall, um, which gives you extra map tiles and you don't get any out of bounds map tiles. So it ends up being faster, but it's very difficult to replicate consistently. Here, I'm missing one map tile that's down here. Uh, this is the backup strat that I need to do for uh, missing one of the map tiles from gravity jumping the wrong way. That's another important reason why checking your map uh, that often can be necessary to finish a run like this. I have done attempts of this kind of run a lot. I would say I've probably put in about 100 attempts total in a run like this. I've only ever finished, I think, like six runs total that give the achievement to me. So um, every time I attempt to do a 200.6% run... Um, out of the 100 or so that I've attempted, I've only ever finished about six. So all those other runs have missed at least one map tile somewhere else. So out of all the runs I've ever done, this isn't necessarily the one that has the cleanest execution. It is one, however, that has the best execution and actually collects every single map tile. Because missing a map tile, um, as silly as it sounds, is 
very easy to do in this game because the maps are just so finicky as to what is considered collecting the map tile or not. Um, and when your goal is to go as fast as possible, you want to just barely collect some of these map tiles so you're not wasting time. And by doing so, you put yourself at risk of actually missing these map tiles. And if you're not opening your map to double check all the time, there's a good chance that you think you got a map tile, but you just barely didn't get a map tile uh, somewhere in the run, like, you know, 40 minutes ago. And there's no way to really know because you're not going to, like, look at that part of the map when you check your map. Or if you're in the second castle and you missed a map tile in the first castle, there's actually no way to know until the very end of the run. So long story short, this run is very brutal very uh, punishing. If you make a mistake, the actual uh, win condition of the run, which is getting 200.6%, is impossible um, at some points without trying to backtrack all the way through the map, spending tens of minutes looking for a specific map tile. For example, some people might be wondering, like, oh, let's say you missed a map tile in the first castle and you get to the very end of the game. How much time loss is that? Well, it's estimated, depending on where it is in the map, anywhere from, like, four to like seven minutes of time loss because the amount of movement it takes to get to that particular part of the map if it's in a very uh out of the way spot in the map it could take like seven minutes to get there and back and then finish the game um or it could take any as quick as four minutes um it just depends so it's one of the reasons why um if i get to the very end of the game and i don't have all the map it's basically a reset at that point there's no saving it Another interesting uh, thing that I, comes with the fact that I told myself as a additional challenge that I would collect every single uh, relic. I'm forcing myself to collect all of these Vlad relics. You don't need to collect all the Vlad relics in order to finish the game. Um, if you're playing through the game glitchless, you do, for sure. Um, but since I'm allowing glitches, you can get to the very end of the game um, and fight Dracula without collecting those uh, relics. And... Um, because I'm forcing myself to collect those relics, I'm doing a particular route that ends up being slightly less efficient um, if I were to skip those relics. So there's a cutscene, a mandatory cutscene that happens if you pass the um, central clock room while having all five of the Vlad relics. And um, at that point in the game, if I were to have all five of the Vlad relics, just pure movement wise, it'd be very efficient for me to um, Wow, that bonk is very, very rare. I can't believe that happened to me. Uh, I bonked against the slope. That's something that really only happens in a few select places because of glitchy slopes. Um, long story short, uh, it's an additional restriction that does lose me more time just for the sake of collecting all of the relics. Um, because I wanted this to feel like a very complete speedrun of the game, like nearly 100% of the game is completed here. You know, collecting every relic, fighting every boss, collecting every map tile. The only thing we don't do that you could consider uh, additional percentage to completing the game, since it's kind of an arbitrary um, point of contention, is going to be uh, collecting every single item in the game, because some of the items only drop from random drops and stuff like that. This is the movement I was talking about earlier. This movement is not the most efficient way to do this, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm forced to do it in this way regardless because um, crossing this barrier right here into this bottom section, if I had every single Vlad Relic, which I will have later, uh, which is the only other time I'd be able to route this out, um, would force a near 30-second cutscene onto me where Alucard cannot move. Uh, and then the clock door opens. So that's a huge amount of time lost, 30 seconds. So uh, to avoid that, we go out of our way to get these map tiles now. When it probably could be faster to get them later. It's something that I, uh, I didn't really get a chance to fully route out because I'm kind of forced into this route. But if I ever do this uh, speedrun again and try to improve the time, I will be skipping the relics. So I'm going to need to reroute that at some point. Uh, we're coming up on everybody's favorite maps to collect. Am I right? If you had trouble collecting these map tiles, uh, if you've ever tried to 200.6% the game, please let me know in the comments of this video. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you've made it all the way, you know, 55-ish minutes into this 200.6% speedrun commentary, uh, I would appreciate it if you subscribed. 
Uh, subscribing does help out my channel a lot. I make a lot of content surrounding speedruns and Castlevania speedruns in particular. So if you enjoy that stuff, I would really appreciate uh, subscribing. But I also am very curious uh, as to you guys' experience, if you're watching this, what your experience was with uh, playing this game, if you've speedrun this game ever, if you've tried to collect all the map tiles. I want to know. Uh, how did it go for you, and uh, how does this speedrun compare to your experience? I'm very curious. Nonetheless, I hope you've uh, enjoyed so far and that you continue to enjoy. Here we have Doppelganger 40. Uh, this is a really cool strategy. Um, what I do is I wait for him to attack me, but I use a Mana Prism beforehand to be invincible. So I bait out the attack, I'm invincible, and then I hold up, and then I open the shield up. Uh, what it does is it activates since I'm holding up and then pressing shield, it activates the stopwatch, which is my sub weapon. And then I'm pulling out the shield, doing a crap ton of damage to um, Doppelganger over here. And it kills him very, very fast. It's very, very cool. He doesn't get a chance to play at all. And here we are, <clears throat> the best <laughs> or worst, really, uh, map tiles in the game. They really are the worst map tiles in the game. They're very poorly programmed. Um, so my method of collecting a lot of these map tiles is to stay in Alucard form for the ones that can be collected in Alucard form. Some of these map tiles cannot be collected in Alucard form. So what I'm doing is I'm actually transforming into the wolf. I'm using a secret uh, mechanic in the game that's never really explained to the player, which is I believe if you have skill of wolf and the holy symbol and you play as the wolf, if you hold the special button, which is triangle, if you're playing on PlayStation or Y if you're playing on Xbox and up, it lets the wolf actually swim which is something that I think a lot of people did not know. So you could swim as the wolf by holding up and the um, special button. So I'm using that swimming mechanic to collect a lot of map tiles by grazing uh, the wolf's head up against the ceiling. And that gives the hitbox closer to that point of the where the map is trying to collect. And I think it pushes the um, camera up higher too. And that ends up being for me, the fastest way to collect these map tiles. So you run really fast as the wolf, and you do these precise jumps and swims with the wolf. And then all the other map tiles at the bottom, you can collect quickly by wing smashing. So yeah, that's uh, a very cool, unique strategy that I came up with uh, as a problem, uh, as a way to solve the problem of how the heck do you collect these map tiles quick? Because everybody who's ever tried to collect the map tiles there knows that they are such a pain in the butt there is outside of doing that no fast way that i could possibly conceive of to collect those map tiles especially consistently too because they are so incredibly inconsistent um you technically could try and collect all those map tiles in alucard form but it, what it requires you to do is to jump uh using the gravity jump uh, from the floor into the ceiling, bonking your head against the ceiling, and you have to hope that you're on the exact pixel required for it to actually count as you uh, grabbing that map tile. It's very, very janky. Um, again, I do wish I understood a little bit more about exactly the um, like function that the game uses to determine exactly how the map is given to the player. Um, I feel like I'd be able to give more detailed answers. There are probably some um, certain modders, certain um, you know, tool-assisted speedrunners, certain uh, enthusiasts that might know more about exactly how the map works. Again, a lot of the strategies and movement and stuff like that is all stuff that I've kind of uh, picked up through speedrunning the game for such a long time, as well as ideas that I've come up with just through intuition and uh, manual testing. So I'm not like a certain scientist, if you will. I'm not uh, super well knowledge. Oh, this is the map tile. I remember. This is the map tile that caused me to go back. I think this is the one big mistake, was this map tile right up here. So stupid. <laughs> yeah, these inverted caverns, man. They have the some of the worst map tiles as far as uh, overall detection goes. Yeah, if anybody knows why that didn't collect, uh, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, overall, uh, this run is incredibly stressful. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't run it super duper often. Uh, I kind of have stopped running it since getting this record. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this record overall. I mean, the overall time is in under an hour and 20 minutes as an end goal. Um, that was my first major uh, goal for this route. So I'm pretty happy with that. Again, if I ever do come back to this, I will be doing it with uh, while skipping 
getting the relics and unnecessary boss fights as well, just to push the time even lower um, and stay within the, the rules of the category. Since the relics and the bosses aren't part of the rules of the category, they were just additional challenges that I put upon myself. And I think for that specific route and challenge, this run is quite good enough. Again, optimizing a run like this is uh, incredibly difficult. There's so much movement, so much that can go wrong, so many map tiles that could just ruin the run at the very, very end um, by just barely missing it. So uh, again, it's a very stressful category. It's a category that is one that just finishing a run alone is an achievement in and of itself, let alone getting a run fast enough to be considered a world record. So uh, I'm incredibly happy with being able to, you, you know, uh, do a run even close to this uh, well, even though there are mistakes throughout it. But yeah, we're almost halfway done with the second castle now. It does go by pretty fast, all things considered. Um, the most important part, honestly, that I've learned while doing this speedrun, uh, as far as like the map collection, is that knowing which rooms are lenient on their uh, map collection and which rooms are more strict. For example, uh, you saw me going uh, through that uh, the couple of rooms after the spike hallway. They are incredibly lenient uh, in order to collect the maps there. Like The rooms are very, very big, but the map that it's tied to is quite small. So it gives you the map tile uh, basically for free, just for walking into the room. It gives you this map tile. Um, that you would expect uh, you would need to like walk further into the room uh, in order to collect, but you really don't. So a lot of the movement too is just like walking into singular rooms and then walking right out because I don't need to. Oh, this is the hardest boss in the game. This just shows the power of the Alucard shield um, as well as just how much health Gallimoth has. Jeez, it takes that long to kill him even though I'm doing 255 damage per hit onto his head. You, you, the way we optimize it is trying to stay at his head uh, as much as possible since it does more damage up there, almost um, like 20% more damage on his head, something like that, if I did the math right in my head. I just guessed, honestly. Um, Gas Cloud is actually really nice to have. Um, you would think that this would be one of the other relics that I would want to skip if I was to do this run again. I actually want to keep Gas Cloud because Gas Cloud is nice for breaking open um, secrets, like breakable walls and stuff like that, without having to untransform. Um, in general, you want to stay in bat form as much as possible, um, and it's very slow to untransform from bat form to human form in order to break stuff open. But instead, the much quicker transformation, which is transforming from bat to mist and from mist to bat, uh, you can do that instead to break open secret walls. So that's one of the main reasons why we get it. Uh, it ends up saving pretty much the amount of time it takes to grab the relic, if not more. So it's also very convenient for just breaking stuff in general. Uh, it's just a good utility relic. It only takes like three seconds to grab the relic. So just for like the animation for the relic to go through, basically. Yet again, another situation where you have to do multiple teleport animations. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to skip those, but again, we have to collect those teleporters. So since we've collected the teleporters, uh, it forces you into that teleporter uh, rotation regardless. But yeah, that's the first half of the second castle done. Here, um, the map tiles aren't necessarily that strict. I believe they're more lenient than they are in the first castle for the very uh, top of those... Um, uh, little spires here in the church or in the chapel but it could still be a little stressful overall to try and collect every single map tile uh, the goal of collecting these map tiles is actually to um, since they're split in half you want to just barely collect the left side and then move over to the right side to collect the right side of all of these situations. Right here, I'm on the left side of the map, and then I'm gonna move over, now I'm on the right side of the map, and then you just go straight up. So that's the optimal way to collect a lot of these map tiles, is just barely be on the left side of the map uh, collection zone, and then just barely move to the right side. And the way that I determine whether I'm on the left side or the right side is based off of the tip of the, um, those like uh, towers here in the chapel. There, I killed the Sniper of Goth because he got in my way. 
I'm trying to set up a very specific uh, left-right gravity jump situation to collect all of those map tiles down there. Um, I've missed map tiles down there before, and it is really, really annoying. Sadly, we don't get to in, uh, interact with the confessional booth at all. It really is just a Easter egg in this game. There is nothing else to it, no additional reason to go in there um, as far as map completion goes, but it's nice to give a little shout-outs to the confessional booth. That breakable wall happens to have the most misaligned hitbox out of all the breakable uh, secrets in this game. They're all uh, treated differently for whatever reason. It seems like they were all individually programmed um, as opposed to using like the shared resources uh, or shared scripts amongst multiple breakable walls. This is the strat I would like to be able to do in the first castle version of this room uh, to make sure I collect all the map, but uh, since we don't have gravity boots, we can't do it, which is sad. It would be even better because there's no chance of bonking your head uh, on the first castle uh, version of this area. Here I'm looking for a specific spot right there to know that I got that map tile, and then I can go by Aquamadon now. Again, a lot of the routing and movement all comes down to memorizing where the map tiles are and where their activa uh, activation zones are. Here, before I forget, I do need to collect the map tiles up here at the top of Aquadon's boss arena. I've forgotten those map tiles many, many times while on world record pace, so I'm glad I did not do it uh, on this run. I didn't forget. On the way back, we collect the rib of Vlad, because again, I want to collect all the relics as an additional challenge. We're collecting all these map tiles now on the way out. It's honestly an incredibly similar strat and um, idea behind the movement we did in this area in the first castle. Now we just have access to better movement um, because we have gravity boots, which is nice. A lot of the movement here is very similar from stuff that we've already seen. Um, yeah, if there's a wall like that uh, right in front of me, it's usually better to use the Alucard shield, but I also could have used the um, Power of Mist or the uh, Gas Cloud, I mean. A little bit of a movement error there. There we go. That's the gas cloud at work, uh, breaking open those. Um, usually it's breakable ceilings and breakable floors. The Alucard shield uh, hitbox is usually not big enough to break those open. Again, it's a secret by secret basis whether or not it will actually be able to be broken with the Alucard shield. So the gas cloud is useful for those specific uh, breakables. Otherwise, I'd have to equip an actual weapon or try and dive kick uh, over and over again on the floors or use spells to open up the ceilings, stuff like that. Here again, um, the Coliseum movement was difficult in the first castle and it's even more difficult in the second castle now because there's more difficult enemies and again, you're trying to avoid bonking in as many places as possible. That's another place where you can bonk very easily. But I do like the movement in this area. Once you get it down, it feels really, really good. Overall, uh, two bonks, not too bad. Taking damage from that uh, white dragon is a little annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. Grab that map tile, which is uh, the last map tile in that zigzag kind of corridor section. And then we can move on to the inverted chapel. So this is probably my one of my least anticipated areas when I'm doing speedruns of this uh, category. Because I don't have access to the stopwatch anymore, I accidentally lost it. Uh, these imps are incredibly aggressive and I can't use the stopwatch to stop them. Um, and we don't have access to uh, stuff like, oops. Yeah, falling off there also hurts, holy crap. I don't have access to the stopwatch to stop them. Um, if I want them to leave me alone, I have to either kill them or uh, try and use invincibility frames to ignore them, which is very, very scary. Um, the movement here again is to aim for these corners because that's uh, the hard part as far as the map completion goes is these little corners of the room here 
Um, guy grabs by an imp, which is really bad. I'm trying to get invincibility by holding the shield out and touching something. Yeah, this room is the other main um, mistake, I would say, overall in this category, that uh, in this run. Not having the stopwatch is what really caused that entire situation to transpire. But nonetheless, we got all the map tile and we can move on. Here I'm going down to collect that map tile right there and then moving on to the rest of the alchemy lab. The Alchemy Lab is honestly just like an awkward shape. Also, there's invisible enemies known as Bitterflies. They're only visible if you stop moving. And of course, we're speedrunning, so we're trying to stay in motion the entire so the entire time. So, so for the most part, they're just invisible. Um, but yeah, the there's a lot of places you can bonk on if you try wing smashing or if you try gravity jumping in like uh, tight corridors. So. You have to be quite particular with your movement. This is another area where the um, gas cloud comes in uh, clutch because you can just be invincible and break open these secret areas without having to worry about getting hit by that uh, witch over there. Stop right on the spot where I need to with the wing smash to collect another map tile. In and out of here real quick. There's no reason to collect that item. This is another interesting um, map collection specific strat to save some time where what I'm doing here is I'm actually walking into this room and then leaving because I don't need the uh, map tile at the end of that room, uh, that CD room. And going through the whole load transition would end up being decently slow. Um, and we can collect that map tile uh, in the inverted castle entrance later instead, which is really nice. Here I'm holding the shield out to get invincibility frames uh, so that way these imps don't screw me over. Because again, imps are terrible. Um, they're a little more tame in that room, but they can still be awful. Um, there's no way to really tell what they're going to be doing. Here I'm trying to hold the shield out and dive kick off of Beezlebub so that way I can uh, stay inside of his hitbox as much as possible and do damage the whole time. Collect some extra map tiles uh, during the boss death animation to save uh, my movement and be as efficient with my movement as possible before the uh, boss door opens up. So yeah, the inverted alchemy lab actually has some of the more interesting and difficult movement, I would say, out of the entire run. Um, we have to do the same thing that we did at the first part of the run, which is collect the map tile down there, because this room is a square, but it's like split in half, uh, which you can which map tiles you can collect where. Again, drop down there just to collect the extra map tile, and then move on. So that reroute I was talking about with um, using the uh, all of the Vlad relics and possibly rerouting it, this would be the time where I would do that movement right now. Um, if I didn't have all the Vlad relics uh, currently acquired, basically. So. Nonetheless, this is a very rare uh, piece of the castle. There's, like, basically no reason to ever come down here, this part of the Marble Gallery. So this is basically the only time you will ever see this in, like, a speed run, this area. So savor it while you can. It's a very, very awkward spot of the game, honestly. So what I was talking about earlier with the castle entrance uh, giving us the Alchemy Lab map tile, uh, I'm going to be showing that off in just a second. I have to be careful not to get hit by the Nova Skeleton because, of course, it just hurts. Right there, dropping down right there and climbing back up, that actually gives me the map tile that I was missing um, by not going all the way through the CD room. So that ends up being faster by avoiding the load transition. Nice. I actually made it all the way through there. So you have to hit the breakable uh, special cave thing there twice. And um, it's difficult to actually hit it twice while wing smashing. Um, the reason that works is because when you're doing um, infinite wing smashes, which is the technique where you do wing smashes over and over and over again, that's how I'm able to chain them together the way I am. Uh, when you do a second wing smash on top of the first wing smash that you just did, 
it actually gives you an extra hitbox on the wing smash. So you have two separate wing smash, uh, wing smash hitboxes happening at the same time, and that actually overlaps on top of the the breakable cave wall there, and it instantly breaks it open um, since both hitboxes are active and it hits it twice basically before you actually bonk against the um, the wall that you intend to break. So it's kind of rare that it ends up working out that way with the pace at which you're wing smashing, but it, it worked out this time, which was really cool. Otherwise, you would have to untransform while the wall is breaking, basically. And it loses a tiny bit of time, but... Small time saves are small time saves, and we take those in uh, any speedrun, really. These are another uh, candidate for the worst map tiles in the game. Honestly, part of the reason is because there are those cave trolls there. They are very, very annoying. So I'm just out here trying to collect these map tiles. Meanwhile, cave trolls have really long tongues and want to stick them uh, in my butt, and I do not appreciate it. So I'm trying to stay as far away from them as possible, I'm trying to collect these map tiles like that. I'm honestly kind of careful with these map tiles uh, overall. Because again, they are, it's near the end of the run. We have like less than five minutes left in the actual speed run itself before uh, killing Dracula. And it'd be very sad to have missed a map tile this far into the run. Also, where did that tongue come from? I'm sorry, what now? This game is silly. I got sniped through the wall. That's hilarious. Um, the inverted version of the waterfall is still pretty annoying. Um, but it's less annoying than the normal waterfall map tiles. Um, they're a little more forgiving because you're falling down the waterfall as opposed to trying to climb up it. Um, but it's not too bad. And that is the last of the caverns. Uh, and honestly, there's not much more map completion outside of the uh, central clock room where Shaft and Dracula are. So my goal now is to teleport over there using the warp system and uh, get that. And also collecting the last uh, relic at the very end there. I also need to collect this room. I forgot. It's one of the reasons why I equipped the demon card when I did. There isn't a way to really glitch in there um, and save time in this castle. You could glitch in there, I'm pretty sure. But at this point, it doesn't make sense because you've already collected the uh, demon card anyways. So going through uh, the setup to make that glitch work is just slower than letting the imp press the button at that point. If I were to skip getting the demon card, then maybe... Going for that glitch would end up being faster, but only by a few seconds or so, probably. Again, something that I haven't timed because I haven't needed to because I've always been getting the demon card. And there's the final warp of the game. And at this point, it's mostly just a victory lap. There isn't much difficult movement or difficult map tiles to collect anymore. We kind of have done it all. It's uh, pretty much it now we have to sit through um there's one more glitch actually that is kind of important um but the actual boss fights themselves are incredibly trivial obviously we have super powerful uh dps with the alucard shield plus shield rod combo um but yeah i'm gonna be flying over here to set up the relic skip so this was normally used to skip needing all five of the vlad relics this is faster than watching the animation of the um uh, map or the clock room open up. So again, this is very similar to the death skip as well as the early caverns and all of the other reverse shift lines that we've done. Um, the river, the reverse shift line glitch pushes you an entire screen length over. And since that's out of bounds, kind of, um, it loads you into the save room on the other side. And then since there's nothing on the other side of the save room, it pushes you down into the uh, floor of the save room, which is actually the ceiling of the room where the uh, guardians are. And then flying through that ceiling, we can end up in the other save room on the other side. Again, none of that gives you out of bounds movement or out of bounds map. And there it is, the achievement seeker 
confirming that we got every single map tile and we got all of the inbounds map tiles because I got the very last map tile right where I'm expected to here in the shaft room, which is also the Dracula room. They share the same exact map position. And yeah, that's it. That's the whole run. Um, thank you again for watching uh, this whole thing. Uh, if you enjoy Castlevania speedruns, speedrunning in general, make sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video. Uh, this was a very fun run to do, even though it was quite stressful. Um, pretty well executed, all things considered. I did get the sub hour and 20 minutes, the final time being one hour, 19 minutes, and 28 seconds. Um, there is a chance that I come back and optimize this run even further, but in the meantime, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, thank you so much for watching as well, and I hope you have a wonderful day.